Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day to you. How wonderful it is that God made mothers. He made mothers, he made fathers, he made children. In fact, once you think about it, everything he made. And that's wonderful to know. Amen. And we're here to give testimony to it this morning. We're here to give praise to the Lord and listen for his voice and what he has to say. It is he that has brought us this far, and he will not leave us alone and stranded. He has told us that, that he will be with us. And because he's with us, we have everything we need. We think about material things, they come and they go. We think about temporary things, it comes and it goes. But God is eternal. And how wonderful it is to know that he's eternal. And he's been wonderful enough to allow us to come and worship him this morning. So let's this morning give praise to God in spirit and truth as we go to church. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah. verses read as thus. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above ruby. The heart
part of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he sh shall have no need of spoil. Yeah. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She's like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth the field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands take hold the distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh her coverings of tapestry, her clothing of silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gate when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Yeah. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. May he sanctify it into our hearts that we may live thereby. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, you are faithful. Each, each day that comes is because you blood are here for us, that we may give praise to you. Thank you for being faithful, Heavenly Father. We may be slow to act. We may be given excuses, but you never give an excuse because you always give us the truth and give us what we stand in need of. We come this morning, Heavenly Father, thanking you for blessing Beargrass Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. 148 years, 150, 160, it's all because of you if we have it. You and you alone. We thank you, Heavenly Father, this morning for mothers because it is mothers that carried us in their womb. It's mothers that brought us to birth. It's mothers that allowed us to grow up being taught by them the right things to do. We thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for grandmothers and great-grandmothers that have done all they could to help raise their grandchildren. We thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because you have fed, clothed, and sheltered children under the wings of their mothers, as uh, Proverbs teaches us. And it's wonderful to know that. And we come this morning, Heavenly Father, asking you, because we know that you're able to, that you're the only one that's able to. We ask you, Heavenly Father, for healing for Jesse. We yes, ask you, Heavenly Father, Lord. that you would bless Alan. Yes, we ask you, Heavenly Father, for Mrs. Clayton, that you would be with her. Yes. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for letting Austin return to the congregation again thank you, yes, Lord. and work in the church. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the others that you've healed, Brother Craig, that you've healed. Thank you, Lord. We can think about your goodness, but we can actually see it and count it, which some people cannot do, but you have made it possible for us to see those things. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for it. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to lead this church in the way you would have it to go. Uh -huh. And let us depend upon you and you alone. Bless you, Heavenly Father. We pray and ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's uh -huh. name we pray. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. 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 We praise God for your presence here this morning. We thank you for being here on this Mother's Day, this day after the Derby. Amen. Amen. Some folk are still running with the horses. And it's uh, difficult enough on Sunday after Derby. 
and so that's Sunday being Mother's Day as well. So we thank God for you that are here. Just a few things we want to, to, uh, to take care of. First, let me uh, inform you, in case you don't know, our own Deacon Austin Lane is running uh, for constable of the 3rd District. And so he's got to win the primary, and it's 10 days before the primary. Now, you know, I tell you all the time, I won't tell you who to vote for, but I will tell you to go vote. Amen. <laughs> It's important to go vote. But since he's one of our own, right. amen. amen. Okay, I, okay. Since he's one of our own, amen. 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 I think amen. we ought to put our support behind our own. And his name will come up on the ballot as Just Austin. Look for Just Austin as uh, the constable uh, for the third district. We want to vote for him. And let's get some godly people in these political offices, amen? Amen. amen? amen, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And then secondly, since it is Mother's Day, the men have uh, uh, a gift, come on brothers, for all the mothers. If your mother, if you serve in a capacity of a mother, then we want you to, uh, in just a moment, to stand, we want to, Guys, do this as quickly as we can. Amen. The men thought of you. Amen. And we thank God for the brothers who thought of, of you. A amen. 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 Thank God for these men. And we have roses for all of the mothers. If you are a mother, we have a rose for you. If you are a mother, even though you have not given birth, but you are still a mother to someone then we want uh, you to take a rose as well. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So we thank God for you. We're here to celebrate you on this day. Amen. Amen. While they're doing that, let me say we're actually still waiting on musicians vehicle broke down on I-65, so we are hopeful and prayerful that uh, he will be here shortly. If not, we will go on. Amen. 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 We will go on. We will go forward. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, to all of the mothers, God bless you. We thank you so much for being who you are and for everything that you do. Amen. We thank you. <laughs> thank you for those of you that are drawn joining us via our social media. We see you coming across. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Whether you're joining us, uh, especially those on Facebook Live who are with us right now, those uh, that will join us on our YouTube channel, uh, those that will join us via our website at bluegrassmbc.org. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Amen. All right, I think we've covered all of the mothers. God bless you and thank you so very, very much. One other thing before our praise team uh, comes back to us, uh, we have this month uh, raised an offering, raised some money for the home of the innocents. Amen. And as you know that we collected all month this month for the home of the innocents and uh, our goal, which I set, was uh, $1,000. Amen. Amen. But I want to report to you that you have raised 1800 Dollars. Yeah. 
And I just think that we ought to write the check for $2,000 to the home of the innocents. So if y'all are in agreement with that, we will present to the home of the innocents $2,000 from the Fairgrass Missionary Baptist Church family. Thank you so very, very much. You are to be honored for your generosity and for your gift of giving to those who are less blessed than we are. So again, thank you so very, very, very much for uh, $2,000 for the home of the innocents. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Come on, praise them.
come on and give God some praise, for he is excellent. Amen. You don't know what you can do until you got to do what you got to do. Amen. You got to do what you got to do. God will come through. And God heal that. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our praise team. Amen. Amen. It's easy to become disappointed and dejected. But then when God got you, God got you. And we thank God for that. We honor God. We praise him. We lift his most holy and righteous name to my co-laborers in the preaching ministry, to all of those that bear the name of Jesus the Christ. If you would, make your way again to the 31st chapter of the wisdom book called Proverbs. All right, all right. Proverbs chapter 31, the last chapter of the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 31. When you find it, say, I got it. If you don't have it, say, I'm looking for it. And we will wait on you. Proverbs chapter 31. Reading from the New International Version of the Bible, we find these words beginning at verse number 24. Verse number 24 of the New International Version of the Bible. Proverbs chapter 31 says, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Mm -hmm. she, her children arise and call her blessed. Yeah. Her husband also, and he praises her. Yeah. Yeah. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Yeah. Yeah. Honor her for all that her hands have done. And let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Amen. Pray with me. God, how we love you. We adore you. We magnify your most holy and righteous name. Here we are again, God, just a few of your believing children with our heads bowed down, but our hearts are lifted up towards heaven, asking that you would grip us, grab us, hold us, hug us, tell us, teach us what you would have us to know at this time in our pilgrimage with you. We pray, as we always do, God, that you would bind the devil. Don't allow him to interfere nor interrupt with this time that you have preordained for us to be together. And God, if we have anything in our hearts that should not be there, I pray that you would move it as far as the east is from the west. And then, God, give me your preacher what I need for this preaching moment. I ask it all in the mighty, miraculous, and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Just for a few moments this morning, I promise I won't keep you long. I want to talk to us from the thought, the strength of a godly mother. The strength of a godly mother. It's, it's intriguing and interesting to me that the wisdom writer, the author of the book of Proverbs closes his book honoring a godly mother. Out of all the ways that could uh, have brought this book to a close, God directed the writer.
writer to close the book displaying the strength of a godly woman. Down through the years, we have seen the contributions of strong women, strong mothers, especially uh, strong women in the black culture, in the black family, amongst the black race. For it has been reported that in 1822 uh, that Harriet Tubman was born into slavery in the decades since the United States has undergone a marked and hard-worn shift in civil rights and the opportunities available to black women. In 1922, Mae Jemison became the first black woman to go into space. And in 2021, uh, about 200 years after Harriet Tubman's birth, Kamala Harris became the first woman and first black American to serve as vice president of these United States. I'm here to tell you that black women have not only made their mark, but have made tremendous contributions to the betterment of all of us uh, in this country. The journey of black women have been long and difficult. But progress continues to be made thanks to countless inspirational women who have fought for equality, who have been activists and, poli uh, and politicians and have empowered generations. Uh, I was the conductor of the Underground Railroad for eight years and I can say what most conductors can't say, and that is I never ran my train off the track and I never lost a passenger. That was, was Harriet uh, Tubman. You know, following Harriet Tubman's escape from slavery, you need to know that her strength was so strong uh, that she made more than a dozen mission trips uh, with the Underground Railroad, saving as many people that uh, it would uh, to get on board with her, and she got them to freedom. People always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired. But that isn't true. I was not tired physically. No, the only tired I was was tired of giving in. That's Rosa Parks, y'all. Uh, when Rosa Parks refused an order to vacate uh, her bus seat for a white passenger, she became a pivotal figure in the Montgomery bus boycott. The ad is the only place free from prejudice. That's Bessie Coleman, uh, actor, uh, 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 aviator. Bessie Coleman grew up working in cotton fields, but always dreamed of flying. And so she saved some money and went to flight school in France, uh, became the first African-American woman uh, and Native American to obtain a pilot's license. She went on to become a high-profile pilot in dangerous air shows. That's the strength uh, of a godly mother, a godly woman. I guess what everyone wants more than anything else is to be loved. And to know that you love me for my singing is too much for me. Forgive me if I don't have all the words. Maybe I can sing it and you'll understand it. Y'all, that was Ella Fitzgerald. Come on, that great jazz singer who, who, who dazzled audiences uh, all across this land and country who heard her, who won 14 Grammy Awards for her jazz singing. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. That's Shirley Chisholm, y'all. 
1968, Shirley Chisholm became the first black woman elected to the United States Congress. And in 1972, she became the first black candidate to run for a major party's nomination for the president of these United States. Uh, she was a woman who, in her own words, uh, dared to be a catalyst for change. Yeah, all right. All right. We were pioneers of the space era. Mm -hmm. Everything was so new. Uh -huh. The whole idea of going into space was new and daring. There were no textbooks. So we had to write them. That was Katherine Johnson, y'all. Katherine Johnson was uh, a, ma a, a, a mathematician who, whose calculations of orbital mechanics were critical to the NASA's first uh, and subsequent crude space flight. Uh, the things to do, it seems to me, is to prepare yourself so you can be a rainbow in somebody else's cloud. Somebody who may not look like you, may not call God the same name you call God, if they call God at all. I may not dance your dances or speak your language, but be a blessing to somebody. That's what I think. That was my Angelo, y'all. I wish I had some help in here. Uh, the, the most healthiest thing is to be true to your own self. But also, that you have a right to express what you see and what you feel and what you think. To be bold. To be as bold as your vision uh, uh, with your vision, to be as bold with your vision as you can possibly be. That was Alice Walker, y'all. In 1982, Alice Walker became the first black American woman to win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction for her novel, The Color Purple. I wish I had some help in here. Once I got into space, I was feeling very comfortable in the universe. I felt like I had a right to be anywhere in this universe. That I belonged here as much as any speck of stardust, any comet, any planet. That was Mae Jameson, y'all. In 1992, NASA Astronaut Mae Jameson became the first black woman to travel into space. She serves as a mission specialist aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor, orbiting Earth 127 times during her eight-day mission. And the list goes on. Can I give you one more? Big Mama. Big Mama comes to us very well prepared. For you see, Big Mama did her undergrad degree at the university on the other side of the tracks. She did her master's degree at the University of Life and messed around and went and got her doctorate, her PhD degree from the University of Hard Knocks. Uh, Big Mama said uh, that if you got God and what's in your hand, the two is a combination that can't be beat. So always hold on to God and take what you 
you have in your hand and make do what needs to be done. Because you see, Big Mama was the one that took nickels and dimes and put them together and sent seven kids to college. Big Mama was the one that had the ability to take what other folks threw away, chitlins and pig feet and chicken feet and make a meal out of it. Big Mama was the one that was able to take Sunday's dinner of, of roast beef and mashed potatoes and peas and on Monday, put it in a pan, put some bread in it, and fry some cornbread on top of the stove and make some, some hash. Big Mama was the one that could take the clothes from this child and cut them up, sew them up, and make them fit that child. Big Mama was the one that could make breakfast uh, so good that it would make you want to slap up, but you better not because you knew better when she took the potatoes that was mashed from yesterday's dinner, uh, put them in a patty, put some flour on them, put them in some hot grease and made potato cakes. Big mama, is not anybody in here that can testify that you know uh, a woman of God uh, that is a strong, strong woman. Yeah, that brings us to the text. Uh, uh, the writer demonstrates the strength and the ability of a woman. Now, we're talking about a godly mother. We're talking about a godly woman. Now, I'm not here to talk about the person who gave birth that's not a mother because that's not who we're celebrating today. We'll talk about them in another message at another time. But we're talking about uh, the mother who not only gave birth, but she was a mother to the children. We're talking about the woman who maybe did not give birth, but still was a mother uh, to some child. We're talking about the woman who can put it together, hold it together, keep it together to make sure that everything stays together. Is there anybody in here besides me that appreciates a godly mother? Is there anybody? In the, I'm here to tell you uh, as a witness of God, if you still got your godly mother and she's still here today, you ought to thank God uh, for a godly mother. I don't care what differences you have. I don't care what differences of opinion. You ought to thank God for a godly mother because I promise you that once that godly mother has left these mundane shores, your heart will have a hole that will never be filled. I don't care how many other women come into your life. Is anybody in here that wants to appreciate a godly mother the strength of a godly mother who didn't have anything and made everything out of it a godly mother who took rags and made things happen a godly mother who took pennies and made uh, the month meet its end a godly mother who had more uh, strength in her encouragement of you than you had in yourself. Who was it that told you, uh, don't worry, keep your head up when your head was down and you know you was jacked up, tore up from the floor up, but she looked, you looked up at her, she looked down at you and told you to raise your head up, get up off your knees, come on, because if you got God, you're going to make it. I don't care what the circle is. Is there anybody in here besides me whose mother told them, you're going to make it. I don't care what they say. You're going to make it. I don't care what they do. Hold on to God, trust him, and get to stepping. The strength of a godly mother is the strength that I'm convinced that God gave them that is so special. And uh, here in the, the Proverbs book, it kind of helps us to see, it kind of helps us to shape this strength that comes from this Godly mother, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She, in other words, she was creative because when you didn't have anything, mm, she had to figure out how she was going to get what she needed to take care of them babies. She had to figure out how she was going to get what she needed to take care uh, of her household. I'm here to tell you that I'm a witness to that as well because my mother would have us kids uh, going out and picking dandelions. Now, y'all may not believe it, and I don't care because it's true, so you can believe it if you want to. We would go and we would find dandelions. You know, dandelions is an ugly little flower. Dandelions is something that nobody wants on their lawn, but we would pick dandelions, bring them back to her. Somehow or another, she'll take them dandelions, wash them off, 
put them in a five gallon thick crock and put some yeast in there, some sugar in there, some water in there and cover it with a cheesecloth and let it set for a while. And then every now and then she'd go down in that cellar, pull back that cheesecloth, skim off the top, put a little more sugar, a little more yeast, cover it back up and let it sit for a while. And before you know it, she had dandelion wine and she would take the dandelion wine and it was so good that she would dip out quartz uh, uh, in mason jars, put the top on it. And when the man came with the wagon for the vegetables, coming down the street hollering, vegetable man, vegetable man, she run out there with a quarter of that down the line wine that we had picked, that she had made, that didn't cost her anything, and get some vegetables. Is there anybody in here beside me whose mama was so creative with what she could do uh, that it made a way out of no way for them and for you and for us? Yeah, she, she made garments and she sold them. She found a way to bring money into uh, the household. Uh, she's clothed with strength and dignity. And that's the thing that, that bothers me right now with some of our women. I'm not talking about a godly mother. Uh, but it bothers me about the dignity that appears to be lost. We have a program going on right now called PAVE where we have mothers who are mentoring uh, young ladies, young mothers, because the motherhood seems to have been lost somewhere along the way. I don't know because it seems like there's no dignity in some of the mothers that there needs to be dignity in. You can't do everything with your kids and you can't do everything in front of your kids and you can't do everything around your kids. you got to have some dignity and a godly mother has dignity because she's going to tell her kids, uh, don't you see grown folk talking? Okay, maybe I'm the only one that remembers that. You couldn't, you couldn't interrupt that conversation. You couldn't run up and stand there and ear hustle trying to figure out what the grown folk were talking about. You need to get your little self on away from here because grown folk are talking. Uh, that was mothers who had uh, dignity. They were clothed in strength because uh, you didn't know what they were dealing with. The only thing you knew was when dinner time came, you had food on the table. The only thing you knew when it came time to take a bath, there was a water for you to take a bath with. You didn't know what they were dealing with because they didn't put that pressure on you. They took that on themselves. They dealt with whatever difficulties that they had to make sure that you had. That's why they went by themselves clothes to make sure that you had clothes. They went by themselves undergarments to make sure you had some undergarments to put on. They wouldn't do for themselves to make sure that you had what you needed because it was always you first and them second in their lives. And, and the writer says, and I'm, I'm in verse 26, the writer says that she speaks with wisdom and faithful instructions is on her tongue. What mother that's a godly mother ever told you anything wrong? Now, I didn't say who had never told you stuff that you didn't like. You may not have liked it, but she never told you anything wrong. She had that much love for you, and she had that much wisdom. I told you that she graduated from the University of Life and, and that she graduated from the University of the Other Side of the Tracks. You can't graduate from the University of Life, University of uh, the Other Side of the Tracks, and the University of Hard Knocks without having some wisdom. Uh, you can't graduate without having uh, some faithfulness uh, about you uh, that will allow you to share what you've gone through with somebody else. The reason why most of us are here is because our mothers shared enough with us and poured enough in us that when we got grown, then we knew how to navigate. When we got grown, we knew how to operate in certain spaces because we got wisdom that came from them. You know, the old school wisdom. I know you don't hear it much today, you know, but they would tell you, boy, you make your bed hard. Okay, come on, that's wisdom. That's, I don't care what y'all say. Uh, that, that, that's, that, 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 that's wisdom. Yeah, you make your bed hard, you got to lay in it. You got to lay in it hard there. They would make you think about what you're doing. They would ask you questions of why would you do that? Why would you think that? Why would you go in that direction? Because this is where it's going to lead you to. A dear friend of mine who works with me at the center says all the time that his mother told him, boy, if you don't change your ways, uh, you're going to find up in one or two places. Either you're going to be in penitentiary or you're going to be in the graveyard. And guess what? She was right because he wound up in penitentiary. Wisdom and faithful instructions. That was what was on her tongue. She watched the affairs of the household. You know what? I think there's a problem uh, uh, that we have now is too much of what's going on in folks' lives is out 
uh, in the atmosphere. Yeah, let me let me put it. it, it, it it's out in the atmosphere. Now I get it. There is uh, a downside uh, to uh, what goes on in this house stays in this house because we've had to endure uh, some stuff that we shouldn't have to endure. You kept secrets that should have been exposed. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you ought not throw out the baby with the bathwater uh, simply because when she had her house in order, then you didn't have no ill going on in the house. A amen. Because if you had a godly mother, guess what? She had her house in order. And you knew that and you respected that. Why is it that it seems like that respect has fleed and gone somewhere? How is it that we don't have respect for mothers that I used to see and experience from everybody that I knew? Matter of fact, you said something disrespectful about somebody's mother. That was the biggest fight of the day, if not of the week. You better not open your mouth and say something about somebody else's mother because that will get you not cleaned up out. She took care of her house. And because she did, the writer says, that the children raised up and called her blessed. I, I, I pray that we can get back to a time when children see in their mother the blessing that God has given them and they raise up and say, that's my mama and I call her blessed. Rather than what we're seeing, little kids with their fist balled up and their mama tell them to do something. I sass them back when their mother tells them to do something. I, I long for the day when we can see little children raise up and call their mother blessed. And the husbands and fathers will praise them also because the writer says that the husband says many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. That's just simply a deep appreciation for what that godly mother brings to the house or what they bring to the family, what she brings uh, to the husband, what she brings to the children. That he says, you know, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. And again, let me say, because I hear you all thinking, well, everybody ain't like that, but we ain't celebrating everybody today. We're celebrating godly mothers today. We're celebrating mothers who will let you know if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? We're celebrating mothers who's held on to God and prayed for your little self and my little self uh, so that we uh, would be held up and not get into trouble we were about to get in. We're talking about that godly mother who walked the floor all night long when you had a cold just to make sure that you were comfortable in your bed. You know what I'm trying to say. When they would take that big vapor rub and rub it all on your chest and then take big chunks of it and put up your nose and then sit up with you all night long to make sure that your fever broke and to make sure that you slept comfortably, as comfortably as possible. Although they didn't get, I'm talking about a godly mother who did not mind taking care of their child. And if the truth be told, a godly mother, especially the black mothers that I know, was stand for their children when won't nobody else stand. They will stand with their children even though they know that their children has done something wrong. When you can't depend on nobody else, you can depend on mama when everybody else has given up on you. And the writer makes it very plain because, because charm and beauty can be deceptive. Uh, the writer says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And that's simple said. That, that simply means that uh, don't put your stock in things that's going to fade, but put your stock in the things that's going to be with you forever. My mother passed from uh, this side of the Jordan River in 19... Uh, 97 and to this day I still hear her ringing in my ear to this day I still see her face uh, in the, her image of her face in my mind to this day I still remember the things that she taught me because she was a godly woman and on her tombstone we made sure that we put her favorite saying on there when she would say God show is good 
That was her saying, God so is good. Every time God would bless her, she would say, God so is good. Every time she would get something that she wasn't expecting, she would say, God so is good. And every time God would lift her up, she would say, God so is good. Every time one of her children would do something that would make her proud, she would say, God so is good. And guess what? I find myself, even after she's been gone since 1997, when God blesses me saying, God, so is good. When he lifts me up, God, so is good. Is there anybody else in here besides me that don't mind testifying that God so is good? And my mama showed me that because my mama made sure that I went to church because she carried me. And as a little boy, I went kicking and screaming and crying, didn't want to be there. But I thank God right now that as an old man, as in my senior years, uh, that she took me so I could learn about this man name Jesus. She took me so that I could understand that there's a God uh, uh, that you need in your life and uh, with him you can do all things and without him you can't do nothing. I'm glad she took me uh, to a church so that I could understand uh, that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not run. I'm glad she took me to a church uh, where I could learn uh, that God will take a rod in your hand, open up a sea, and let a million people walk around. Is there anybody in here besides me uh, that appreciate what God has done and is doing through godly women, through a godly mother? And let me close by saying he gives us another example because what came to my mind was uh, Mary standing at the foot of the cross of her son, of her firstborn son. And hearing him say, uh, woman, behold your son. And to his beloved disciple John, uh, behold thy mother. What he was saying was, you've been with me all along, but here I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing for the father. But I ain't forgot about you. Yes, yes. I, I ain't gonna leave your mother Mary by yourself. I got John who winds up being uh, the, the longest living disciple uh, of the 12 that walk with Jesus and said to him, behold uh, your mother. He, he said, take care of, of mama. Wow. And I come by to tell somebody that uh, if you still here and you got breath in your body, whatever uh, you do, make sure that you take care uh, of your mama. Yeah. You only have one mother and uh, you won't get another. There's many that will step in and try to be a mother and God bless them and we thank them for it, but they can't take the place of a godly mother. Here she is standing at the foot of the cross as her son uh, has nails uh, in his hand and in his feet. They talked about him, lying on him, falsely accused him, and here he is on Calvary's cross. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, she's here, I'm sure, pondering as it says in Luke chapter 2 uh, when uh, those men came to see him and, 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 and the Bible says, uh, and she pondered these things in her heart. I'm sure that uh, she was standing there thinking about the time when they went to the Passover and when he was 12 years old and they left and, and was gone for a day and looked around for him and didn't see him and went back to find him and found him three days later in the temple talking uh, to the scribes and the Pharisees, talking to the teachers uh, about our God. Uh, and she said in a scolding way, uh, what are you doing? Uh, we were concerned and he had to tell a, a woman, uh, don't you know I got to be about my father's business. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm sure she's standing at the foot of the cross uh, uh, when uh, uh, she began to remember that at the age of 30, he came walking uh, down by the Jordan River and his cousin John looked up and said, here comes the Lamb uh, of God to save uh, the sins of the world. I'm not even able uh, to unloose the lashes of his shoes and baptize him uh, in the Jordan uh, and hear God say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And here she is, a strong, godly mother standing at the foot of the cross. Yeah. 
Uh, I believe that she pondered all that he did because he came to help and to heal. He didn't come to hurt nobody. He came to make everybody inclusive. He came uh, to let everybody know that you got an opportunity to accept this God uh, that is your creator. But here he is now on a cross being crucified, being given the worst death of that day. And here she stands as a mother at the foot of the cross. Can you imagine what she must have felt to have seen her boy on this cross after they beat and spit on him, put a crown of thorns on his head and mocked him and said, if you be uh, the Christ, uh, come down. If you are who you say you are, you saved others, uh, why don't you save yourself and save us? Here's his mother standing here looking up at her child and watching him uh, put his head in the locks of his shoulders uh, and take his last breath. But then that ain't all. She had to leave at that time but came back uh, early on uh, uh, Sunday morning looking to do for her boy what she felt nobody else could do. And you got to know that when the love that you have uh, for your family is that strong, you don't want to leave anything out. So the Bible says Mary and Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they went to the tomb looking to anoint his body because that's what she knew she had to do only to find that a boy wasn't there. But can I help somebody understand that when she looked around, she heard the voice of her son say, go tell my disciples and Peter to meet me in Galilee. And therefore, she knew that what he said he was going to do, he had already done. So I see her going from a very dejected and, and very downward moment in her life, seeing her boy on the cross. But then on Sunday morning, she seen him as he was resurrected from the grave, talking about all power in heaven and earth is in my hands. And so therefore, the wisdom writer says uh, that she ought to be celebrated, said honor her for all that her hands have done and, and let her works bring her praise in the city gates is simply saying give mama her just do yeah. uh, whatever you think of her give her her just do or yeah. uh, whatever you think give her the praise that she deserves uh, because if truth be told uh, a whole lot of us wouldn't be here if it had not been for a mother who loved us enough to take us up when we didn't have nobody else to take us so all I come to tell you today, love your mother. Yes. If she's still here, make sure you love her. Make sure you give her all that you can. Because if Jesus hesitates and don't come back, all of us is going to leave this earth. And once we're gone, once she's gone, there is no replacing. Of the strength of a godly mother. You ought to celebrate God for the strength of a godly mother. You ought to celebrate God for the strength of a godly mother. I wait. You ought to celebrate God for the strength of a godly mother. You ought to celebrate God for the strength of a godly mother. Whether she's still here or whether she's gone on the glory, you ought to celebrate God for the strength of a God. You ought to celebrate God for the strength of a God. You ought to celebrate God for the strength of a godly mother. You ought to celebrate God. The doors of the church are open. If you're here and you don't know this Christ that we're talking about, now is your time to come. If you're here and you're saved, you know you're saved, but you don't have a church home now. It's your time to come. You're not here by incident or accident. 
If you're joining us via Facebook Live, if you're joining us via our YouTube channel, or if you're joining us via our website, beargrassmbc.org, please leave us a message. DM us on Facebook. Leave us a message in the comment section on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. We will reach out to you. For it is our desire that everyone be saved. The door is open. Will you come? Will you come? The door is open. Will you come? We don't own the rights to this music. We want that stated explicitly. The door is open. Will you come? We're waiting on you. We're living in terrible times. I don't know how people are making it without God in their life. Will you come as we meditate and pray for you that if you're challenged with a decision, please don't let the devil win out today. None of us is guaranteed we're going to be here tomorrow. As a matter of fact, none of us are guaranteed we're going to be here this afternoon. Much less tomorrow. So if you don't have God in your life, now is your time to come. You've tried everything else and everybody. Nothing seems to work. Can I also tell you that the biggest Mother's Day gift that you can give a godly mother is for you to accept Jesus in your life. For every godly mother that I know has a prayer that seems to run through that motherhood. And that is, Lord, let me live long enough to see my child saved. If I can just live long enough to see them saved, then I can be satisfied because I know if they're saved, when I'm no longer here, they're going to be all right. Will you come? Amen. We've done what the Lord has asked us to do. So therefore, if the bidding locks, the blood is not on our hands. Again, we thank you. Those that came in after, if we have any mother that came in after, we have, or we should have roses left for you. You got them that came in the door. Amen. Thank you. But we don't want to leave anyone out. All right. Again, we thank you for your presence here today. It is offering time. Amen. Go ahead and get your email together. If you have not already, uh, we appreciate all of the gifts, the tithes, the offerings that continue to come and flow. Amen. Sister Eva is here this morning. Sister Eva Brown, God bless you. She had not been with us for a while, but she's here today, and we thank God for her. But she never missed sending her tithes and offerings and whatever was going on. She supported uh, I want everyone to really realize that she was not here physically, but she was here and supporting amen. everything that's going on. Amen. Oh, so, amen. Jean Griffith, amen. It's amen. good to always see you. I'm glad to see you, Sister amen. Jean, in the house this morning. God bless you. Amen. We just thank God for those uh, who have come and continue to come and to show and to share. Amen. God bless you so, so much. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate you. All right, if you've had time to fill out your envelope, amen, amen. If you 
at a time. Uh, we thank God for those that continue to give via our Givelify. Amen. Via our Givelify, we see you come across every week. Thank God for you. However you give, whether you drop it off, whether you mail it in, whether you give it to someone that you know is coming to the in-person worship service, we thank you for being so kind and considerate in your, in your giving. So uh, as we do each and every week, uh, don't be ashamed. Whatever God has given you to give doesn't matter about the amount. It is about being obedient to God. Whatever he's given you to give, don't be ashamed of it. Hold it up. Be proud of it. Amen? Because if you got something to give, that means that God is doing what he needs to do in your life. So whatever it is, it's not equal giving, but it is equal sacrifice. So hold up whatever. If you give him via your device, hold your device up. Amen. However you're giving, there is no shame in what God has given you to give. It's not, again, about the amount. Generosity is not a money thing. It's a mind thing. And so we want to celebrate you for what God is doing in your life and how he has given you something to give in this worship experience. All right, let us pray. God, how we love you, we adore you, we magnify your most holy and righteous name. We thank you for the hands that are holding the offerings. We thank you, God, that you have blessed us in such a way that we have a mind and a heart uh, to give, that we want to be cheerful givers because uh, you love a cheerful giver, God, and we want to thank you. So we ask your blessings upon all of the givers, those who are holding the offerings. Bless their going out and their coming in. Bless their families. Bless their homes. God, I pray, pray that you would manifest in their lives all that they need to make them better, to make them who you're calling them to be, God. So we thank you for the hands that's holding the offerings. Now, God, we ask that you would bless the offering, make it do what it needs to do, that we here at the Beargrass Missionary Baptist Church can continue to run up the King's Highway, holding high the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ, telling a dying world that there is a reality in serving a true and a living God. Make the money do what it needs to do, that we will continue to be a lighthouse and a witness for our Christ. We ask these blessings in the name of Jesus. We do pray. Amen. All right, have a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day. Amen. Everybody on my right and your left, if you would stand and face the outer wall, everybody on my left and your right, when you stand and face uh, the outer wall as we prepare to receive the benediction and we can drop our offering as we exit the side door. Amen. We're glad to see all of you that are here. God bless you. Thank you so very, very, very much. Amen. All right, take us out. you would use them as you have in days past and gone, that they would uphold and stand firm as the women that you have made them to be. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, with the communion of his Holy Spirit, let it rest you in the body with us now, henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. We will see you Wednesday night at 6 p.m. for our midweek Bible study.